Well, there we go. All right. I think uh, I think we're good for the first little members stream. Hold on, let me get everything set up here. I think we're good. Move that out of the way. Make sure everything's coming in properly. Uh, great song choice. Well, I I'm glad you like it. I actually, I'll let you in on a secret. I'm gay as gay can be. And I actually watch dance channels. And a lot of the music that I like comes from those. Like One Million Studio, uh, which is like a Korean group that usually you can find some really great shit if you listen to their stuff. I came across that, I think, about uh, four or five days ago. And I can't stop listening to it. It's it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Actually, what's the name of it? I'll tell you what the name of it is if you want to look it up. Uh, that's The Weekend Blinding Lights is the name of that song. Uh, pretty enjoyable stuff. How, how are you doing, fellow members? Hopefully the stream is coming in, the audio is good. If not, just tell me. <laughs> you knew it? You knew it? Yeah, well, I listen to all sorts of stuff. I watch all sorts of shit. Oh, well, yeah, Korean chicks dancing. Why would I not? Why? Well, how could I possibly pass that up? An entire studio full of them. Hundreds and hundreds of them dancing. It would be impossible not to want to watch that. Um, now, I know the, uh, at least I think, uh, the Super Chat stuff's turned on. Don't don't worry about that. There's no point in using it. There's some weird shit going on right now on the back end of YouTube. Uh, if you try to stream, I, I go through like the classic studio. I can't stay in the new studio setup. And if you go through the classic studio and set up an event, you get this pop-up warning that says, what the fuck does this thing say? Um... It, it basically tells you it, it's not going to be around anymore. Like setting up events like you used to be able to do, it's gone. Uh, starting January 1st, they're getting rid of the entire old school Stream Now events and live control room. And they're replacing it with this new monstrosity. And I don't know how to work it. So I don't want to fuck with any settings until I'm forced to. So like January comes around and if I try to stream, it's probably going to be horrible. For at least two or three weeks until I figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to do. Like, the interface is just awful. The moment that you turn it on, the new system, it automatically asks you for a webcam. And if you're using, like, um, OBS or something like that, it, it, it's just, it's really weird how it's set up. And then they've got, instead of having something where you can, like, have super chats on, but you don't want commercials like they used to, now it's one solitary button for monetized or not monetized. Too many cooks in the kitchen. I don't. I don't understand what the point is of fucking with shit that works. YouTube does this all the time. They'll have a system that actually is functional, and then they come in and they completely fuck with it. It's like it, it works too well, so we're gonna completely fuck it up. It reminds me kind of of uh, the uh, Twitter overhaul that was supposed to be more mobile for everybody that nobody seemed to really like. That was designed by that uh, group of women that thought they were gonna reach the youth with their new uh, mobile centric ideology or philosophy behind the platform but with youtube it's like a yearly thing and i guess this time around uh live streaming is now going to get fucked into the dirt and reading the comments on their demonstration video it seems like there's a lot of shit going on with just making it function properly i i can't get i can't get my games to show up windows aren't showing up this version of obs doesn't work my webcam's broken the mic isn't picking up it won't let me go live when I want to. It won't let me schedule his time when I want to. And the video's like, you're good to go. Come January, fuck you, you're using it. How long do you think YouTube has left as the main video hoster? Probably quite some time. I, I don't know. I'm going to say another four to five years, but it'll be diminishing as time goes on. Uh, BitChute, I know, is uh, you know on the rise, uh, but they still have a long way to go. I like BitChute, but they have a long way to go. And I knew they're doing this funding thing. So they have Subscribestar and Bitcoin. And I think on Subscribestar, they're taking in $12,000 a month. And I, I, I haven't looked at their Bitcoin wallet, so I don't know what they're pulling in on cryptocurrency. But they're, they're bringing in a decent amount to keep the servers up. But they, they want to do crowdfunding to get a team of people to actually make the website better. That's what their big fundraiser is. They're at like 48 49% right now. Uh, the only reason that's significant is the next tier, which is like $200 away in donations, is uh, a web developer, which means they'll finally fix their fucking search function and they'll fix their uh, user interface 
and all of that. I don't think live streaming is going to come to BitChute until right around the election next year, which is a little sad, but it's too much to implement. Like, I've seen them make it work, and I know they've run tests. Uh, people back in, like, June and July were sending me screenshots of live streaming that was happening on BitChute with the peer-to-peer -peer shit and all the other stuff. Uh, but it was a real narrow um, demonstration, and it was only Alex Jones and nobody else, just them. And I think it was just them testing, can this even work if we want to try to do it? So I think it's it's a ways away. And I think you need a platform that uh, has a stable interface, a really good search function, um, and live streaming to be able to compete with YouTube. I don't think the money thing is as important. Uh, people can plug their own shit. And there are a bajillion fucking services out there from uh, PayPal to Streamlabs to Entropy to everybody else for accepting donations. So, I mean, that's already something people can plug in. But just having a place you can stream is a big fucking deal. Uh, so when they eventually get that in, I think it's going to be a big thing. Also, the audience they bring in. I mean, it can't just be everybody they got forced off one platform and onto another. It has to be people willingly coming over. Because uh, they want to do shit, you know, shit there. Video game stuff, anime stuff, movie reviews, all that kind of stuff. Shit posting, YouTube poops or bitch shoot poops, I guess in this this case. I don't know. If it's not broke, fix it until it is. Well, that's basically what it is. Uh, it is lonely in there, yes. I'm probably going to miss today because somehow I managed to get a date today. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, going forward, I might archive these myself. Or if other people are going to archive them, fine. I just wanted them to be members only while they're live. Because, you know, that was the whole point, I guess. Um, but afterwards, I, I don't really mind. Uh, so if you miss it, there should be a copy up. If not, going forward, I'll put an archive up somewhere. And, I guess, deal with it that way. I'll also put up a poll and figure out what time works best for people. I just shot for a weekend in the afternoon because I thought that was the safest but maybe like Sunday's better maybe the evening's better I don't know I don't know chat you tell me <sighs> Hannah Smith thoughts on Bunty King flagging videos <laughs> also big woke poop shoots yes would be a good term for it uh, with Bunty King I don't know I, I've heard he has a tendency to go after anybody that uh, makes fun of him especially in regards to the cuck video uh, it's my understanding that there was there was some YouTuber, I think it was a black chick, um, who was going over his cuck videos, and he went after her and got her channel demonetized. Uh, all speculation, I don't know for a fact. Uh, there was a couple other people that put videos up making fun of him that mysteriously went down, or their channels mysteriously got demonetized for doing it. Uh, I, I guess your safest bet, if you want to call Bunty King a cuck, is to do it on um, is to do it on Bitshoot. Or a Daily Motion, or wherever the, or what is the other one that's out now that everybody's using? Molyneux just did a fucking uh, interview over there. Library TV, I think it is. YouTube used to have groups. Yes, it did. YouTube used to have a lot of shit that I miss. I, I miss the reply video stuff. I know. Oh my God! All, all the thoughts are going to use it. All the uh, big titted girls are just going to reply girl to everything. But there was something endearing about coming across some fucking furry video. And doing a video reply, and they can't get rid of it. It just sits underneath their video. So there's their goofy furry video, and then underneath it's your video making fun of their video. And everybody that watches their video sees the, re the response, the video response. I miss that. That feature was amazing. I mean, there was some limited control. There can only be five showing at once, but uh, it made YouTube a lot more fun. But yeah, they used to have groups. They used to have a whole lot of features they just wiped out. And a lot of the shit that you see up on YouTube now is the stuff they stole or outright took from other websites. I mean, Stage 6, uh, back in the day when YouTube was still doing 4x3 and the best resolution you could get was 360, was doing 16x9 videos at 1080p. They let you download directly from the website. Um, there was no restriction, so you could watch cartoons, then anime, then listen to politics, and then go watch porn all on the same platform. They had user groups and uh, creation groups and all that kind of stuff. They also did, you know, the uh, upvote, downvote rather than five stars. They had a lot of features that just got uh, yanked and taken and then claimed to be original. 
Why don't Indians know how to flush? I don't know. It's a heritage thing. They just love pooping in the street. That's why UNICEF had to do the uh, potty PSA for the entire country. That's that's my best bet on what exactly is going on with that. Sean Turner, Sunday at 6 p.m.? Maybe. Uh, uh, like I said, I'll put a poll up on the uh, community tab and figure out, I guess, what's the best time for everybody and then just go with the majority opinion. That way, th the most people can show up. Because I think now we've got like 20, 20 people, roughly about that. And I think there are 50 members, so about less than half, 40% have shown up. So it'd be nice to try to hit 60 to 70%. So at least people aren't completely missing it and then wondering what the fuck happened. But I did try to put up numerous little announcements so they knew when it was and how to get here and that kind of shit. Mike Enoch versus Destiny, who do you think is going to win? <laughs> I have no fucking clue. I know Ralph has that scheduled for what, January 10th, I think it is? I mean, I've heard Destiny to debate. Everybody has. We know what his basic tactics are. I know what Mike Enoch's basic tactics are. I mean, I think it's just going to devolve into a insult match. And, you know, that'll be 30 minutes of it. They'll, they'll talk for 30 minutes cordially, kind of. And then it'll just be uh, jokes about one another's personal lives. It should be entertaining, but I have no idea who's going to win. I don't even know exactly what they're debating on. Is it just white nationalism? Is it uh, ethno-nationalism? Is it immigration? Is there a specific topic? Or is it just let's let these two go at each other, or at each other and see how that turns out? Uh, why is YouTube trying to become cable? They have YouTube TV, which is literally cable. Uh, money. I think that... Um, Google AdSense compared to television ad placement via uh, you know the, the companies that make this shit, there's more money in it. Uh, if you can route the most traffic to specific channels, and those specific channels are big names, right? So the ABC, CBS, Nightlines... Uh, Comedy Central's, SNL's, that kind of shit. If you can make the majority of people go to that rather than all the people that are doing independent commentary or independent comedy or independent content, then you can assure who's going to be advertising and get the best premium out of them. And if you can make it more TV-like, you get a more TV-like model when it comes to the ad revenue through commercialization. So I think it's beneficial. I mean, this is a loss leader for you or for Google. The Alphabet Corporation doesn't make money on YouTube. Like, when you're looking at consoles, like, look at the 360 and PS3. Was that, uh, PS3 was an $800 console at launch, and they sold for $500. So that was a, a $300 loss on every unit sold, I believe. And it was a loss leader like that for years, until eventually it, it turned around because manufacturing got better, supplies increased, and they could finally start making somewhat of a profit. But they were making money somewhere else, or it served another purpose. It strengthened uh, the brand. And I think for Google and Alphabet, YouTube is that. It's just this giant fucking loss leader. And it was cute and fun for a while, but now they're starting to see a potential to make it not a loss leader. Oh, well, we'll get these big corporations to come here. We'll get rid of the problematic people. We'll bring in the big advertisers. And we'll turn it into the internet uh, version of television which nobody fucking wants. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen it, right? There are multiple channels that pop up where nobody has any idea who the fuck they are. They suddenly have two or three million subs and only two videos. And they're getting highlighted and they're trending. And it looks like it's professionally done. It reminds me of that shit of all I want for Christmas is a PSP. You know, Sony had this backwards-ass marketing campaign where they wanted to apply, <laughs> appeal to the hip kids. So they tried to make it look like a viral video, but you could smell the marketing team behind it. it this fucking taint, this disgusting smell that hung in the air that made it real obvious that this wasn't a real thing. Um, and these kind of channels that are popping up right now all over YouTube, that's what that is. Uh, I've noticed it really heavily in the um, makeup community, in the drama community, and a couple now in the video game community. 
you know, this relates to uh, signing celebrities. You think Jack Black gives a fuck about video gaming? I don't buy that for one goddamn minute. They want to get rid of... Pe Let's get rid of PewDiePie and bring in Jack Black. Oh, my God, he's so funny. Did you see him? The fat, funny man? Oh, my God, the fat, funny man who did fat, funny things. Kids will like him. Oh, those little Zoomers, they... Jack Black's going to be popular with the Zoomers. You could just... I can see the boardroom meetings. In my mind, if I visualize, I can see these fucking discussions taking place. Uptight fucking people in suits. A bunch of drunk female executives. Everybody's sitting around drinking their uh, Franzia boxed wine. Discussing how they can get rid of the problematic shit. And make this uh, a new thing. Oh, if we make YouTube internet television, then we cement Google as an internet superpower. You know, let all the uh, independent companies try to do their own uh, delivery platforms, the Netflix, the Hulu, Disney Plus, and all of that. You know, let that be the specific thing. But the general approach for cable, let that be us. Let's get rid of the you, and let's, uh, let's make it the me tube. And we'll make this as corporate as we can, as sanitized as we can, and as marketing directed as we can. Hey, Jim, uh, did you ever see that article about the machete brawl at a Frozen 2 showing? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Youths. There were 100 youths who got into a machete brawl at the uh, <laughs> a movie weekend where parents were taking their children to see Frozen 2. Didn't know Disney inspired such or Pixar, or whoever the fuck makes it, inspired such violence, but apparently, apparently they do. Uh, you get more you get more views than Monday Night Matt when his is public. I don't know. Well, we've got 20 people watching, so that that's double Matt, right? I'm at two times a Matt right now on a private member only stream. Oh, I don't. I see. I don't even know what Monday Night Matt's up to. I've been blocked by a lot of these people. Uh, Monday Matt has blocked me on Twitter, so I can't even see what he's been discussing lately. I know he got into a fight with, uh, I don't even know what her name is. I don't keep track of these women. Lauren Chen, I think it is. One of the Asian ones. He got into a fight with Lauren Chen and, um, about Star Wars of all fucking things? I don't know. I mean, if you like the fucking movies, great. I have no interest in them, but he seems to be on, like, a holy crusade. To prove to people that Star Wars isn't pure fucking unfettered dog shit. And if you tell Monday and Matt that it is dog shit, that it's badly written, that the characters of Mary Sue, uh, that they tried to make amends for the first two uh, movies by shoving literally everything they could into the third one, that makes it some uh, disjointed, incoherent fucking mess of a film, he, he doesn't like that at all. And he's at war with some comic book guy over this? I, I, I don't fucking know. Uh, did you see Sargon versus Vosh? I didn't think I could find anyone insufferable or more insufferable than Sargon in a debate, but Vosh was smugness times a thousand compared to Carl. Well, I did see. I did see some of that. I like that Vosh, though I will admit, I did like that he wore a suit. That's a nice little homage to things. Um... I, I couldn't stick around for the whole thing. I, I know Vosh got upset, uh, you know, was complaining about moderator bias or something. But, um, I don't know if I could know what to tell you. Listen, I mean, my interest, I, I'm, I'm fully sated when it comes to uh, Sargon. I said the liberalist thing would not work, and it didn't. And I told him UKIP was a mistake, and it was. And after UKIP imploded, and Gerald Batten imploded, and then the next leader imploded... And now they're on their third new leader, who I think has already imploded, which was some ditzy 40-year-old soccer mom who came up with a manifesto that basically made no fucking sense. They hold no power, no seats. Their the percentages are like half a percent to one percent in nearly every fucking district. It's a dead-as-doornail party. And uh, I don't know what to tell you. Did you ever watch Cobra Kai? Is that the YouTube exclusive? I don't have YouTube Red. I think you have to buy the YouTube TV shit they're doing to watch that. I, I heard it was pretty decent, but I, it's not enough to make me go watch it. Uh, they're getting athletes too. Juju Smith-Schuster uh, got paid big money to play games. 
Well, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. I, I think the real money hatting right now going on is not YouTube. YouTube is its own fucked up thing, and they don't know what they're doing. Uh, right now, the big war is between Twitch and Mixer, and Twitch was treating people pretty shitty uh, when it came to its policies and its monetary splits and all that. So then you get people like Ninja leaving, and like two or three other big guys have left. And I think uh, Mixer's owned by Microsoft, isn't it? I think Microsoft is money hatting people. Microsoft is basically Epic Game Store. <laughs> and I think their approach is, hey, we'll pay you more, and we won't be complete cunts to you if uh, you say a naughty word or if something goes wrong. I, I know they're both restrictive, but like the, the war of the streamers for the video game community, that, that's what it is. I mean, you even have PewDiePie going off and doing DLive, and I wouldn't be surprised. I, I don't know how long he'll stick exclusively to DLive. Maybe it's like a one or two contractual, or one or two year contractual obligation. But I wouldn't be surprised if he moves or ends up over on Mixer or Twitch exclusively. Who knows? Uh, be careful talking about people in suits, Jim. The last time he did, a political party was sacrificed for it. Uh, rip and pepperoni. May they. May they always be remembered. Oh, poor you, Kip. We do Skype calls with members. I might going forward. I, I don't have that set up right now. Uh, but I know Skype lets you... You know what I might do? I know Skype lets you set up your own number to have call-ins. Maybe that would work better. And just do like a member call-in thing. Uh, and see how that goes. Which will probably be disastrous, but I'm, I'm up for it. I've done call-ins before. Uh, what was your favorite debate during IBS? What's my favorite debate during IBS? I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't, was what was the one where uh, Worski lit his? He, you know what? Let me. See, I'm gonna see if I can find it. Give me one second. I'll see if I can find part of this fucking uh, debate. If you if you want to call it that. And I'll see if I can, if I can play it. Yeah, Andy Worski nipples on fire. Is that still up on the internet somewhere? Oh no, that's that's a kill stream review of it. Uh, maybe this is part we of the. Had to talk to somebody. Very true. This this wasn't. Uh, this is just. Uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, this, I suppose, would be the best because it was the worst. Oh, by the way, I hope you like the image you see on screen. In case you're wondering, Mr. Kermetto, uh, that's my personal hand-drawn artwork by Christine Chandler. See, I'm not dead naming her. I respect this beautiful woman. Christine made me an official part of Quickfill. <laughs> so it's Mr. Kermetto to you. Uh, okay, I think I've got the video here. Here to go. Uh, let, me, <laughs> let me, let me grab it. Uh, it should come up here. I, I, I didn't have this previously set up, so hopefully we don't have any super technical issues. All right, here we go. It's only two minutes of it, but it should give you an idea. It should give you an idea of what the, uh, the, <laughs> just the shit show that it was. We had to talk to somebody. They wouldn't be screaming. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, but yeah, I, again, I was gonna be very, very... I made a mistake. I offered if... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, the thing I loved about this was it's just... It's people screaming nonstop in the background at each other. Just nonstop. And there's Andy Worski lighting his tits on fire. His head shaved. Looking a little disheveled. I <laughs> just... Just the insanity of the moment kicking in. Uh, it, 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 it's one of the more memorable moments, I guess. It's right up there with Aim, 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 which was another good one. 
I'm trying to. I mean, there there were some fun. You could put together a nice little collage of fucked up moments from it. Not really, maybe the day to day stuff, but there were some good. There were good. Yeah, here we go. And he's gonna do his handstands while lighting his tits on fire. Always, always a nice touch. Oh yeah, the music. Somebody overlaid the music on it. Hey, Kaboki, please stop. Andy's about to set himself on fire over here. Jim, shit, are you okay? Andy, Andy, my job here is Targ Wrangler. Worski, are you alive? I wish they had the. There's like a nine-minute version of it. So much stuff has been purged off YouTube; it's impossible to find really anymore. I don't even know if Aim 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 is still up. Let me see if I can find that. I mean, there should at least be a musical remix of it. Oh, okay. No, that is. <laughs> of course, yeah, that was such a big deal. There, there, there really isn't a way he can make it disappear, is there? <laughs> it's, the whole thing is up. Oh, is there? Is there just, just a point where? Let me see. Uh, sorry, chat. I'm just trying to cue it up. Uh, it just <laughs> give me one moment if we can get to the heart of it. Uh, do they have time codes? The oh, they do have time codes. All right. Okay. I don't know, chat. You tell me. This is a members stream. If you don't want to watch it, we can discuss other things. Or we can watch the moment that Andy Worski and uh, his Canadian boy toy decided to go GTA in the streets of fucking Florida on a couple of random drunks from a bar. <laughs> We're gonna end you! Uh, well, what is that? Failure was such a piece of shit, he did so much shady stuff. Uh, Hannah Smith. Uh, well, yeah, if, if you... Yeah, he said something during it. He was one of the first persons to scream shoot when this was all going on. Uh, from Salvador the Fourth, let's watch it. Sean Turner, move on. I don't know. I'm getting. We'll watch. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll split the difference, and we'll watch the uh, just the basic moments of it. Just a few minutes of it to close up the what were some memorable IBS things, which I I would count this among, to be honest. We don't have anyone around here. Oh, so let's walk away. All right. They're coming towards us. All right, yo. Stand your ground. All right, stand your ground. Here he is. Stand your ground. Stay back. Stay back. And grab the fucking speaker. Stay back. Stay back. Go aim, 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 aim. Stay back, guys. Go, Alex. I feel proud to do nothing. Yeah, see, that's the moment that always got under my skin, right there. That moment right there in this video. Right as he's running away, you hear him start screaming, shoot, shoot. Stay back, stay back, stay back. Listen really carefully. You hear that? Shoot, shoot. Stay back, stay back, stay back. Stay back! Stay back! Stay back! Stay the fuck back! Stay back! So there you go. There, there's your your memorable IVS moments. I mean, I, I, you could make a whole clip compilation out of it, but I haven't really thought about about a lot of this shit in a while. I don't know what the majority of them are up to. I don't know what Tonka's really been up to. I know he's doing like streams with. 20 people uh, watching and they're all moderators I, I think that's the main thing and I, they're probably still talking about fucking Godzilla to this day that or Jim Sterling wrestling I, I, I don't fucking know I know Andy's back doing stuff I think he's done like 5 or 6 streams I think he had Kraut on recently and uh, Kraut was like muting somebody so he kicked him or something uh, but that's about the majority that I know as far as everybody else I haven't really, I haven't really kept tabs on him too much like I said, I've been weaving out, watching fucking anime and reading manga. It's hard to keep track of a lot of the shit at this point. Uh, wasn't this guy trained in some MMA? Why didn't he just brawl? 
I don't know. I don't know uh, why why he didn't uh, go into a uh, fighter stance. There were no Hadoukens being thrown. <laughs> Which is the majority of the time when they say, I've been trained in MMA, they're out there shurukening people. Oh boy, here it comes. Oh God, he's gonna he's he's doing his Ryu stance. We need to run down the street now. I don't know if you've ever seen those <laughs> those moves, but well, we're in a lot of trouble. We are in a lot of trouble. Once again, please read uh, my immortal. You want uh, see? I was actually I, at one point I was going to do that, but then the internet historian beat me to it. So there's really no point. Uh, the last fanfic that I read was about some pony shoving a tree stump up their ass. And I think a Sonic story about S Sonic getting fucked by Robotnik? I don't, this was a stream from like a year or two ago. I mean, those those are old. They're out there somewhere. But there was a, a night of uh, fictional writings. The best creative minds that came from... I don't, I don't even remember what the website was. <laughs> it was... It was pretty bad, I'll tell you that much, though. Uh, memorable IBS-wise was uh, you versus CRP and Nick versus CRP. I don't... I I remember getting into a bit of a tiff with CRP. I don't know if I remember... Oh, you mean Nick Fuentes. Uh, I almost... I thought you meant Ricada. Uh Yeah, I remember Fuentes and CRP going at it. Oh, no, you're saying to you, the immortal. Uh, to you, the immortal. Is that... Okay, I thought you meant my immortal. That one I'm more familiar with. I haven't heard to you the immortal, so I wouldn't be able to tell you what that's about. Uh, do I think Internet Historian will survive the purge? Initially, yes. I think for at least a year or so. Uh, because he covers more events or news stories. And the way he does it, I think, will keep him safe. Um, I'm actually more worried about uh, the guy that does Down the Rabbit Hole. And he doesn't even do offensive stuff. He doesn't say mean things. Uh, but if uh, it's just how sensitive everything is right now. There's some uh, female YouTuber who's got like 1.2 or 1.3 million subs that does crime stuff. So like if you've ever read a news story and then thought like five years later, hey, whatever the fuck happened with that? She's the one that does a, she has a channel dedicated to doing updates. So she'd be like, hey, do you remember that uh, kidnapping? That happened eight years ago. Well, here's what happened. Or do you remember that murder? Well, it's been solved. Or do you remember uh, th this kid that was a uh, you know victimized? Here's what happened to the uh, the aggressor. You know, it's not it's not meant to harass or target anybody. It's it's just an update. And she already started getting shit yanked down. And when YouTube talked to her, they were like, Oh, don't worry about it. It's probably a mistake. Just appeal it. And she appealed it, and within five minutes, they denied the appeal. So, you know, it there's so much content that can't be done anymore uh, that it's going to get to the point where you're going to start seeing, I think, the ones that are really going to get fucked with hard next are the archivers, where the archives are meant to make fun of the target. Which makes me think, like, uh, Sean Ranklin with, like, Wings, and the people that, like, do DSP archives... Like, I'm worried about uh, This Is How You Don't Plays. I think that that stuff could get wiped out, um, which sucks. So I hope I hope all of that shit gets backed up, at least, maybe on, like, a bit shoot or something else. But Historian himself, I think, will be fine for a while. I think Dankula with Mad Lads will be fine for a while. Uh, but times are changing, and it's going to go from uh, meaner... You know, it, it, it's going to go from crazy politics to politics to mean humor to moderate humor to any humor and i think it was really accelerated because of the whole maza whatever his name is from vox and crowder i think that really forced them to make it go faster than maybe they even wanted it to go and then you add in the child protection stuff and the copa stuff and it's just it's reaching the point look at all the uh, people that make like children's content like legitimate kids content you know the family channels all of that they can't have comments on anymore. They can't put up end screens anymore. Uh, their advertising revenue's been just drastically slashed. Uh, you know, they can't have live chats if they do a live stream event for some reason. You know, there was one uh, family that did videos about kids that had, like, diseases where they tried to do, like, charity stuff. That was the whole point of their channel. 
like, hey, here's the kid we're highlighting. Here's their disease. This is how tough it is. Uh, what can we do to help them? How can we explain what it is? Uh, that's all they did. And YouTube dropped a fucking hammer on them. You know, no more comments, no more monetization, nothing. And they were devastated. They're like, well, this defeats the whole purpose of what we're trying to do. Why are we getting fucked with because you're worried somebody's going to leave a comment? We're adults doing this channel. The kids aren't doing it. We're highlighting children to try to help them. Uh, but YouTube just didn't care. Jim, want to crack on Tuna Melt Chan? Fuck no. No, I think I'm good. <laughs> Am I telling... Uh, okay, wait. Are you telling DSP is actually going to outlive his detractors? Yes. DSP is actually going to outlive his detractors. At least on YouTube. Now, that's not everywhere else, but... Uh, you know, unless... Well, I, I don't know. It's a race against the clock. He might end up homeless and therefore without internet. In which case... Uh, victory goes to the detractors. Uh, but if he avoids that situation, yeah, I think they're going to wipe out a lot of the DSP stuff. I think a lot of the DSP, uh, this is how you don't plays, a lot of the, uh, just a lot of that stuff is going to get taken down for targeted harassment of another content creator. Like, that's the big key going forward. That's what you have to remember. And the vague language in their terms of service update and what people aren't paying attention to enough is not that you can't laugh at a creator anymore, though that language is implemented, but that there is a explicit quota of how many times you can. So if you put up one DSP video laughing at DSP, you might be okay. But if you have 20 DSP videos laughing at DSP, they're going to drop you. And that's in their new toss. It's, it's very subtle, and it's injected in, like, the middle of it, and it's worded in a very weird, vague way, but it is in there, along with the you-can't-make-fun-of-public-figures thing, which I think is what they're going to apply to uh, politi uh, you know, politicians to protect people in the upcoming election. Uh, did you watch Toad's video on Foodie Beauty? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, what is that? Uh, so everything fun, yes. Everything fun will get purged. Yes. Did we ever finish going through that stuff from that log claw that was obsessed with the Star Trek actor? Are you talking about Gale? Uh, well, I, I watched Gale's videos. We can't really watch them over here. Because <laughs> cat sodomy is a great way to get pulled down. Uh, but I did archive like a hundred of her videos because I was worried her channel was going to get yanked. Uh, just on the off chance. That was the chick that was obsessed with Brett Spiner. Uh, Data from Star Trek. Uh, thought his wife, was it Laurie McBride? Uh, was like an evil devil clone and wanted to marry Brett Spiner. Excuse me. And live happily forever after in some weird fucking meth-induced uh, delusion. Uh, video game live stream? I, I, I don't know. That's up to members. If you guys going forward want some video game stream, I, I guess I could do it. But uh, here's the thing. Um, one, I'm not that great at video games. I, I usually just play them for fun. So if you're looking for a competitive level play, wrong person. And two, I swear like a fucking sailor. Uh, I swear when I play video games, and I swear when I drive. And usually it involves about every racial epithet uh, and insult you can imagine um, and it's a, it's a great way to nearly get shot when you're driving through the cities <laughs> or banned when you're on the internet it just comes out, it's like a tick it's like Tourette syndrome, I can't stop myself <laughs> it just if the, some of the shit you heard um, it doesn't even make sense but it just it starts and I can't stop it and I get very into it. And I don't know how a video game live stream, an honest one, uh, would work going forward. That makes it even better. Well, <laughs> if BitChute does live streaming, maybe we can do it there. I, I don't think they would really care very much. Uh, DSP is like the Greek god of luck. You are correct. He is a bit like the Greek god of luck. Gale and Spiner, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah uh, Gale, I can't remember the full name of her channel. It was Gale something, uh, but it was her and Brett Spiner. She had, like, some super obsession with him. 
and uh, was really into him. Somebody actually mentioned something earlier too. Um, I think it's on my my channel comments. Let me see if I can find this. Uh, sorry, chat. One second here. Uh, they brought this person up, and I didn't. I haven't really had a chance to look into it, but it is it is true from what I could find. Uh, they brought up somebody by the name of Alex A L I X Henriel, which was some chuck back in like 2005 or six that wanted to marry Sonic the Hedgehog. And I was like, oh, that that's fairly obscure. You know, I found an ED article that was listed for her. And then I found somebody did a documentary on her, uh, which was kind of... So I'm wondering if that was similar to the Brett Spiner Gale thing, except instead of data, it's a anthropomorphic hedgehog that this lady wants to bang the shit out of. Play XCOM 2 on Commander difficulty. I don't fucking know. What do you think about Kevin Spacey's... Okay, listen. I loved Kevin Spacey's an actor. Like, I fanboyed out over this motherfucker. Then I hear all these allegations about all the crazy shit he's done. You know, hitting on young guys. Some are like 16-year-old teenage boys, allegedly. Um, just a bunch of horrible shit. And I was like, well, fuck, that ruined it for me. I can't, I can't like the guy anymore. Then he starts putting out these crazy fucking videos once a year. And the first video he puts out is basically a fuck you, right? And then two people mysteriously die. And then this year he puts out another one basically saying, uh, you know, um, you kill him with kindness. And the very next day another accuser dies. And I got to be honest with you, I think I like Kevin Spacey again. If you're psychotic enough, if you're psychotic enough to kill motherfuckers, to like travel the world and assassinate people and then make YouTube videos bragging about it, <laughs> rubbing it in the face of everyone, that's sort of amazing to me. I can't think of anybody that's ever done that before. But that coincidence is too much. You know, He releases a video talking about killing and the very next day one of his accusers is dead. There were four accusers. Three of them are dead now. And the last guy withdrew his complaints, probably living in witness protection, scared shitless that Kevin Spacey's going to kick his door in and blow his fucking head off. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't know what to make of it. You know, it's those suicides are about as believable as Jeffrey Epstein's. Like, it's just the thought of Kevin Spacey doing a Kaiser Sose all over the world, hunting down these men and fucking massacring them, not even just assassinating them, but killing them in a way that makes it look like a suicide that's like evil genius that's like a supervillain thing kevin spacey's like a real life supervillain like he walked off the pages of a comic book you thought oh this guy's some actor and oh he's got some weird sexual uh deviancy and criminality in his past and then the next thing you know people are dying and he's doing videos laughing about it like that supervillain shit that's that's a, it's a it's a supervillain trope, where you mock the heroes and tell them your plan before you do it. That's what, he literally did that. Kevin Spacey is fucking Lex Luthor, and the YouTube audience is Superman. He's telling you, Superman. Hey, guess what? I'm gonna murder some fucking people, and you can't do shit about it. <laughs> Motherfucking Kevin Spacey, and I'm leaving corpses all over the world. Uh, Kitty did the, yeah, it was, it was, uh, some, I, I think, who was, I don't know the age of the boy, it was like 16. It was like some Hollywood boy, some, some boy actor from some, like, Broadway play, and then he hit on some guy that worked at a restaurant who I think was like 22, and then there was another guy that was 18. There were four of them, I can't remember the ages, but I know one was underage. And then the other three, I know two of them were adults, but I don't know what the fourth one was. So, like... And then the when the relationships took place, I don't even know that. I remember it was big in the news, and then he came out with the um, I'm gay, so you can't blame me excuse, and then everybody started dying. The moment Kevin Spacey told the world I'm gay, suddenly everybody starts dying. Uh, House of Cards was good with him in it. It's such a shame. 
Yeah, I watched a little of House of Cards. I never got a chance to really get into it. I was more of a fan of the movies he was in. Like Usual Suspects. Uh, what is the one where it's uh, he's in the suburbs and like going through a midlife crisis and his wife cheats on him with a realtor? American, not American Pie, American Dream? Something like, something that, something, American something was a good one that he was in. Spacey got his assassination training from his role in COD. Potential, oh shit, do I have top chat turned on? Sorry, guys. All right, there we go. Maybe I missed some stuff. Uh, I'm the same way with driving and playing video games. I think a lot of people. My dad is Hitler. That's a quote from Kevin Spacey, is it? Ameri oh, there we go. American Beauty. Thank you. I like that movie. What the hell else was he in? What was a, He was in some movie where he played like a, a, either a psychopath or an alien. Pax, was it? Paxa or Pax? Something like that. He's been in a lot of shit. And I know I, I saw an interview with him on Inside the Actor's Studio where he did like a thousand impersonations and every one of them was dead on. Which makes me think when he goes around killing people, he has like a really good makeup disguise and he puts on one of those impersonations. So if anybody describes him to the police, they're like, yeah, Marlon Brando just killed somebody. <laughs> it, it was Marlon the Brando that did it. Oh, oh okay, well, we'll send... It will say, Al Pacino was here and he, he beat a man to death with a fucking metal cane. Al Pacino, yeah, it was Al Pacino, I swear to God. Sounded just like him. Kept screaming hoo-ha as he cracked his fucking skull in. <sighs> Let me get rid of that, move that. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but I've got an exclusive for you little member chat all 20 all 20 of us watching right now are you aware well let me let me pull chat first let me ask you a question do you believe in aliens and do you believe in the illuminati it's really important i know your answer to this critical question uh, because i'm about to amaze and astonish you oh yeah seven he was also in seven that is correct and i don't know how much I don't, I don't know how much of a delay there is. Trust me, you want to answer the question, you're going to like it. Uh, aliens in the Illuminati. Chad, I need an answer. I can't, I can't move forward with this uh, amazing conspiracy without, without, having an, without having an answer. Yes to the aliens. I believe in A's. Yes and yes, true believers. No to both. Well, Mr. Dozeman, I'm about to convince you. Aliens more like Galeans. Okay. All right. We've got some true believers in here. Wow. Well, I'd like to tell you folks something. Right now as we speak, the Illuminati and the aliens, I'm talking about the Council of Aliens, all the aliens, the A's, the Greys, the Reptilians, maybe even the Nordics, all of the aliens are working with the Illuminati and they're targeting a YouTuber. Now, this is super secret information, <laughs> but a YouTuber is being attacked by all the powers of the world. They've gotten together to get him charged with drunken driving. And now, he's taken this video down after putting it up, but somebody re-uploaded re an archive of it. Would you like to watch and hear about how the aliens in the Illuminati are getting him charged with drunk driving? Yes, it is time to be woke. We must wake up and we must fight back. Now, I'm sure you've heard of this this YouTuber before. Uh, it's actually a fairly large channel. Uh, their channel name is Secure Team 10. Uh, they have two two and a half million subscribers. Put out a lot of videos, you know, like oh UFO spotted, you know, those kind of videos. A uh, very big channel. Two months ago, suddenly went silent. Nobody knows what happened to him. Well, apparently a lot happened to them. The aliens and the government came for them. So let's watch the video where they explain to us this uh, master conspiracy that's going on. <laughs> I knew you were going to like this. All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, again, the video that was initially up on his channel is privated now. I'm not 100% certain why, 
maybe the Illuminati told him to take it down. It was just too much. Uh, but here we go. Hey guys, Tyler here with uh, Secure Team. Uh, it's good to see you. I know many of you have been wondering where I've been. And uh, suffice it to say, it's been a very traumatic and tough past couple of months. And, it, and an even worse past couple of weeks. Um, the original reason I stopped posting videos is because I started going across the country to film a new documentary that I've been wanting to work on for years. Uh, then uh, I started getting threats uh, to shut my channel down, to stop what I was doing, to basically cease and desist uh, my truth seeking and to stop digging around as they called it. I denied those requests and I kept going. And before I knew it, uh, one night I was sitting in my house. I remember falling asleep and the next thing I remember is waking up in my car with a police officer outside of it who then charged me with DUI. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, I already love I, I love this video uh, to start with. So let's let's go over alien gang stalking Hannah Smith. Please don't jump script yet. We're just getting into it. So our truth teller, who's out there to tell the truth, our Fox Mulder here, right with his his big channel. He's out there doing a documentary on the stuff he loves. He's going to travel the country, film, do all this great stuff. Suddenly he gets phone calls from mysterious strangers. I'm going to guess the Illuminati, telling him truth seeker. Your YouTube videos hold too much power for the general public. You must cease and desist with your activities, or we're coming to get you. But our uh, secure team, he's too brave. He, he's not hes not ready to give in. He's not, I, I, I believe him, Jim. I'm glad you believe him. He's not ready to give in. He knows the truth. And then what happens? Well, it must be the goddamn aliens. He falls asleep in the house... And the next thing he knows, an officer is arresting him for drunk driving. Those fucking gray aliens. And their penchant for getting people, uh, abducting them with their flying saucers and their special tractor beams. Getting you drunk on tequila and putting you in motor vehicles just to watch you get arrested. It's a funny thing to them. A lot of people think aliens are assholes, like they abduct you and stick things up your ass. That was kind of funny. That was when they were going through their Japanese phase of humor. Like the Japanese, like physical stuff and uh, body, uh, like bodily function humor, uh, and the aliens enjoyed that for a while. But now they've moved on to pranks, and they love pranking bros. And the biggest prank they're into right now is they abduct you, get you really fucked up on liquor, and then put you in your car and have the cops come and arrest you. Now, if any of you have known me for any number amount of years, and my family will tell you this, I'm not a drug addict, and I certainly do not drink alcohol. I think I've maybe drank in a, a drink of alcohol maybe maybe once every year and that's usually at uh, New Year's. So only drinks around New Year's. By by the way, what time of year are we at right now? Oh, that's we're, we're right near New Year's. Okay, just double check it. Immediately I knew I was being set up for something. But I went to jail. I protested my innocence. I was released that same day. God, do you think oh do you think when he was arrested and the cops were taking him into jail, he was screaming, I'm not drunk, it's the aliens. I'm not drunk, I didn't drink anything, it's the fucking aliens. You don't understand, <laughs> the little gray men, they did this to me, officer. They abducted me from my living room. Got me really fucked up on whiskey. It's all they're doing. Because I run a YouTube channel that exposes the truth. And within a week or two... The police here where I am staying got a phone call, an anonymous phone call, that I was beating my girlfriend uh, at the house. That was the aliens as well. <laughs> so, okay. So, okay. This, see, the aliens are real assholes when it comes to their sense of humor. All right. To the, they really, they take it a step too far sometimes. All right. You got to troll in moderation, A's. Um, so first they get him arrested for drunk driving, and they thought, that's pretty funny. 
And then they start calling the police station <laughs> and using their big gray telepathy minds to tell the cops, hey, uh, this dude's beating his girlfriend. You better send a squad car. We're staying at. The police showed up. And like they usually do in domestic violent situations, whether there's evidence or not, they usually take someone to jail, usually the man. My wife protested and said that I hadn't touched her and that nothing had happened. But the police nonetheless put me in handcuffs and took me to jail. I was put under a probation hold with no bail and spent a week in jail being threatened and beaten by guards at the Knox County Jail. Now, you should understand, again, it's these fucking aliens in co or cahoots with the Illuminati. <laughs> so, he puts up a video um, saying flying saucers are real. And the aliens are like, that's it. This dude needs to learn a lesson. Let's get him drunk and get him a DUI. Then call the police and say he's beating his girlfriend. Now, Illuminati, this is where you step in. Once he's in a human prison, I want you to make every guard at the Knoxville jail beat him. Just beat the shit out of him mercilessly every single day that he's in there. It's funny, trust us, I know you don't get our sense of humor. We're aliens. We, we find things a little different funny than you might. I was told to keep my mouth shut if I knew what was good for me. They didn't specifically mention my channel, but I understood what they meant. Now, I know there's been some videos posted showing my mug shot, my charges, and this and that, but I have to tell you, all of you guys right now, this is, if there ever was, a setup. Oh, actually, you know what? Um, okay, one second, one second. Now, I'm, I'm not going to show his mug shot. Uh, I, that's, I mean, if you're really interested in seeing it, you can. Uh, nor am I going to, you know, publicly say his name, though I, I think he does himself. Uh, I will show you what the mugshot looks like, though, uh, using an approximation. Because he has this exact look on his face. And, um... <laughs> this is the exact look! Oh, here, where is it? Where is it? Here we go. <laughs> this is, I swear to God! Okay, hold on. Hold on, there we go. Um, when he got arrested, if you look at his mugshot, I swear to you, I swear to God, this the, the way his, the mouth is and everything, um, this is what he looked like when they brought him in. Because um, he had enough of all those aliens and their fucking bullshit. And that's the look he had on his face. <laughs> the, the just, <laughs> that exact look. That's the that's a classic white person look. That's the, that's the look you get on your face when you're walking down the street and you don't want to nod or say hello, but you want to acknowledge somebody. It, that's the look that he had on his face. Now you kind of have an idea of what the mugshot looks like, in case you were curious. Just to give some context. Context to this whole thing. All of you who know me, you know I'm a kind man. I, I don't... I couldn't hurt a fly, let alone a woman or my wife. I'm certainly not a drinker. I don't do drugs. And so... It seems to me that when the threats to shut down my channel failed, that they upped the ante. They put me in jail under false charges, to which I've organized a team of lawyers. But this is really tough. I spent a week in jail. I was beaten by guards. I was told to keep my mouth shut. And this whole, this whole thing has been so traumatic, I've had to go on antidepressants because I've been suicidal. Okay, hey, pro tip for everybody out there. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to offer, uh, this is real genuine advice now. Uh, it, whether it's aliens and the Illuminati, or you're just going through a really rough period of bad life decisions. If you're in a situation where you're doing shit to get yourself in trouble, or there happens to be a group of people trying to get you in trouble for whatever reason that might be, whether it's just trolls on the internet or the Illuminati or aliens. Don't go on YouTube and put up a video where you make the statement, I am feeling suicidal, because somebody is going to use that to get you committed. 
That's the last thing you want to admit on a public platform that you are a danger to yourself because now <laughs> the guy that has a DUI and a domestic abuse and battery charge is is threatening to kill himself. So whoever is fucking with him, whether it's aliens from Pluto or some asshole on the internet, has another new vector to get him once again handcuffed and put into a 72-hour hold. So don't do that. It's a very bad decision. Apparently something I've said or revealed in one of my thousands of videos has upset, has upset someone, rubbed someone the wrong way. But I want you guys to know, you know who I am. The two million of you who've subscribed to me and those of you who've been with me from the beginning know that I'm a good man. I wouldn't hurt a fly. In this past week, having been in jail and just being released, I can tell you that there's something much bigger going on. I don't know what it is. I'm trying to grasp it. My lawyers are doing their best just to try to figure out what's going on because none of it makes sense. My wife doesn't understand it because none of it makes sense. <laughs> I know this is a very mean joke to make, but do you think maybe his wife doesn't understand it because as he's beating her, he's telling her, it's the aliens making me do it? <laughs> do you think that's what she doesn't understand? Honey, stop hitting me. It hurts so much. It's not my fault. It's the aliens. The Illuminati and the brain control trips. Chips in my mind. They're making me hit you. I don't understand it. What I, what I can gather from all of this is that these people out there who would want to silence you, they are real. And they have the muscle and the power to silence you. And that's what they've tried to do to me. They've tried... When it didn't work when they threatened me and told me to stop talking and to shut down my channel, and I said no, that didn't work. So the next step is to arrest you on a bunch of false charges and to ruin your reputation. I have a bunch of people online posting videos of your mugshot and your charges trying to ruin your reputation. Because if threats don't work, then... Ruining your reputation is the next step. And I want you, all of you guys to know that I love you. I'd also like to say, um, I had no idea who this guy was. Like, I knew, I, I've heard of the channel before, right? I've heard of the channel before. I knew he was, like, uh, the alien guy. Or, like, the, the government conspiracy guy. Like, I knew he did those videos. That was all I ever knew about him. Um, but the only way I found out about all of this was because he posted this video. If he had not posted this video on his main channel after disappearing for two months, nobody would know about any of this. I mean, he's saying people... I look to see, like, oh, what like what mugshot stuff is he talking about? Like, he's saying people are passing a shit around. Are they really doing that? I found two tweets where people were doing that, and I think that was from a week ago, and I found, like, three videos of people making fun of him. So I think I think he legit made it worse by putting this video up which is probably why he took it down. I appreciate you. I've done nothing wrong. Any of you who know me know that I'm a straight edge guy. <laughs> I barely take an aspirin when I have a headache, let alone drink or do drugs. And I certainly am not a wife beater. I've been with the same woman for 16 beautiful years. And she will tell you, which I'm planning on posting a video that uh, I didn't do anything to her and these charges are trumped up they're nonsense they're trying you get in front of that fucking camera and you tell them I don't hit you you tell them it was a goddamn aliens or you're gonna get what's coming to you don't make me take the belt off bitch you better tell my YouTube subscribers I treat you like a fucking princess I'm sure that video is gonna go over real well trying to silence me so I wanted to post you guys this video because I literally just got out of jail two days ago after being tortured and tormented and beaten for a week straight. I don't know where to go from here. All I know is that I've gotten lawyers, but I'm not going to be silenced. I'm going to continue my work. 
I'm going to continue posting videos. Jail didn't break me. Beatings didn't break me. And threats won't break me. So I want you to know you have a friend in Tyler. You have a friend in the secure team. I will continue to bring you the news. I will continue to reveal the truth about what's going on. And I just hope that you guys will have my back and not judge when you don't know the full story. Because I can tell you right now, there are things at work here that supersede me and that supersede all of us. Things I've never dealt with. And so that's it. I hope you guys will stick by me and look out for the next video. Have a good night, guys. This man is a hero of the planet Earth. If the aliens and the Illuminati weren't busy fucking with his life on a daily basis, they would be enslaving us. But because Secure Team 10 is there, and he's so entertaining to fuck with, they've put their, they postponed Project Bluebeam in the enslavement of a species. Just to get this guy arrested for DWI and wife beating. And <laughs> getting every guard at the Knoxville County Jail to beat him. And to tell him, you better not say a goddamn thing. You upload any more of those ground-breaking videos, and we're going to put you in your place. Oh, what a disaster. Don't ever go on camera and say you're, you're, you've thought of suicide or you're going to kill yourself. You're going to get committed. Yes, the aliens are going to commit you. Now, I don't know what's going to... Are, are people going to start fucking with this guy? Like, are they going to are they going to dress up in alien costumes and hold signs on his front lawn that says, "We're coming for you"? <laughs> You're going to get. We planted marijuana in your car and called the police. Something crazy like that? Like, I don't know. Is this some like troll conspiracy to come after him, <laughs> or is he just somebody that got drunk uh, and passed out in his car and got angry about it and fought with his wife and then smacked her when she got mad about it? I don't know. I don't know the truth. Okay, I can't tell you the truthiness of this, of what's going on with Secure Team 10. All I know is uh, they're out to get him. All right, they're out to get him. This reminds me of that time uh, the Illuminati put tranny porn on Alex Jones' uh, personal cell phone. You remember that? <laughs> Alex Jones is doing a video broadcast, and he's like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the truth. And he's going through all his, all, all of my apps and my videos. And he's flicking through them to find the truth. And uh, one of the one of the big fucking videos is some giant dick tranny. Oh, that's not, uh, the aliens put it there. <laughs> so I know, I know those, the shenanigans they get up to. I know those aliens and their shenanigans. And maybe it's the same group of aliens that have come after Secure Team 10. I don't know. Let me actually, let's. Let's take a look. Let's see what video it was in particular that drew all this intense scrutiny. Let's pull this channel up here. Chat, we'll do a little, we're going to do a little deep dive and see if we can find out what it was. What was the video that made the Illuminati decide he had to be taught a lesson? The Alex Jones tranny video? You guys haven't seen that? All right. Well, hold on. Let me. I'll pull it up. I. I don't. Well, will it be on YouTube? It was a big fat tranny cock. We'll see if we can find. <laughs> we'll see if we can find it. I don't even know if that search term. <laughs> Come on. Somebody's got to. I might have to go to BitChute to find this one. Oh, come on, come on. Where is the? Oh, 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 I found it. Okay. All right, here we go. You want to see this? Here, here you go. Here's the Alex Jones, uh, looking for the gay frogs, uh, clip where there's big old tranny dick on his phone. <laughs> Little iPhone, InfoWarsYes.com. InfoWarsYes.com. That's where you go if you want to get big discounts on the full spectrum of their products. That's where you go if you want to support the broadcast and support yourself. Believe me, people know in five years haven't had another supplement or, you know, a personal wellness company here. It's just been my own products. But these are so good. And I heard about it from family and then from George Norrie and others that I had to get involved. 
InfoWars, yes. There's no space in that. InfoWars, yes. Dot com to go look all of this up. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I had myself muted. All right, did you see it? It was very briefly flashed. I think they're going to slow-mo it. We'll, we'll take a look. Let's back up. Let's Zapruder film this motherfucker back into the left. On show. Back the family, to the left. From George Norrie and others that I had to get involved. In all, all up. Okay, do you, <laughs> do you see this stab right here? Some super sleuths took the time to find out what that was. Let's see if they actually show it. Oh my God! There's, do they do they not do they not show it? Okay, um, there's a better video. It's not up on YouTube anymore, I suppose, where they're able to decipher on a higher quality video what the title was, and it's like T girls deep dicking each other's asses. But this is his this is his web history, giant big old tranny dicks right on right on in the middle there. I'm surprised some of you didn't know that. That's that's just. It's one of those things. <laughs> it's one of those things that's up there. Oh, I always love that clip. Oh, there's another video too, but I, I don't know if that's up anymore either. Uh, somebody took a CNN interview where they uh, interviewed the Amazing Atheist, and they took his sex tape and they interspliced it, so you don't know that it's the Amazing Atheist sex tape. So the, the CNN person's doing the interview and they ask him a question, and then it cuts to the sex tape of him pouring uh, boiling hot oil all over his micro penis. And then it goes back to the host. And it does this like four or five times. And it's the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. Uh, but the, I don't even think that's up anymore. I think that's been purged at this point. Oh, uh, let's see. That doesn't show up on my phone. Well, I, I don't... <laughs> Are you looking at tranny videos, or are you saying, are you saying that like your porn history doesn't show up? I don't know what it was. I don't know why. You'd think he'd be super paranoid, right? Like if I'm going to show something on air, I'm going to make sure that every aspect of what I'm going to show uh, doesn't have a homepage or a stuck or a bookmark or anything, uh, just to be as cautiously safe as I can about uh, getting caught being into any weird shit, or even just even normal porn, just anything in general. That people might come across. Uh, yeah, so it's a, it is the boiling oil video, but it's the boiling oil video interspliced with CNN footage, and it was on YouTube for like six years, and everybody who watched it had a good laugh at it, but nobody reported it because they thought it was just the basic CNN interview. You'd watch like a minute of it and be like, ah, whatever, uh, because it was like a minute and a half in that they start showing him pouring oil all over his cock. Uh, and then, you know, the bananas up the ass stuff, too. So there, there's some fun edits out there, if you can find them. Try to look it up, maybe. Amazing Atheist uh, media interview. I don't know if you can find it, but uh, it's, it's fucking memorable. It would be hard not to remember that. Uh, the banana video, it, it was a set of videos. I can't I can't remember the entire backstory. It was like him sending these sex tapes to a girl he liked. Like they were, they were uh, you know, erping with each other. Or uh, there was some, some kind of a, a feigned mutual interest. And so he's like sending sex tapes. And he's like, yeah, you like this banana? Oh, yeah, you like that. Oh, you want to see me pour hot oil all over my balls? Here you go. Oh, yeah, you like that. <laughs> that was the context of the videos. Uh, yes, he was one lighter away from making a delicious meal using his uh, his body. But we, we got a little distracted. We were gonna we we're gonna take a look and see if we can find out exactly what Secure Team had ready, uh, what video was responsible for them. Uh, let me let me pull this up here. Okay, uh, I know it's a little off, but we'll we'll go. I, like these are all very old. Uh, Alien-like thing discovered under the Arctic. Massive unknown object to be transported. Multiple strange events. What are they not telling you? Oh, here's something from five months ago. Proof. Something big's about to go down. Unknown space machines hidden in the Earth. 
Area 51 about to get forced open. What really caused the major California earthquakes? I they, See, he covers a whole host of things. So I'm not sure which video out of all these videos is the one that the aliens and the Illuminati said, you know what, too much. You've gone too far. Uh, we need to deal with you. <laughs> we can't allow you to continue on. You need to be dealt with. Oh, did somebody find the interview? Okay, what's the interview name? If it's a, a well, tell me if you know the interview name. Uh, well, I don't know if we can play this or not. It's a risk. Maybe we'll take it. What's the interview name, uh, Justin? If you found it, you'll know because it starts off like a normal interview, and the next thing you know, there's boiling hot oil being poured all over somebody's genitals. I mean, technically, it's not sexual content. We could call it performance art. This is avant-garde, new wave performance art. Post-modernist performance art. I think, I think we can get away with it. Amazing atheist. Shocking CNN interviews. Uh, well, this, okay, let's see. Is this, this might be a re-upload of it. Let me just take a look. So the talk back question today, at least the first one, why is a... <laughs> hey, yeah, that's it. Nicely, you found it. Good job. This is a re-upload of it, though, because um, the original video is really old. It's really, uh, no, I was watching, yeah, 216. Um, I, I, I don't want to risk playing it on stream. I'll, I'll get, oh my God, as they've, YouTube age restricted the video based on community guidelines, but they didn't take it down. That's amazing. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what, chat. I will save that for the end of the stream. How does that sound? I'll save the amazing atheist shocking CNN interview. Uh, for the end of the stream. That way, if you're archiving this, I know a few people wanted to archive it. Uh, you could just you could just cut it out without any issue. And um, I think we can, we can skim through it fast enough that we avoid having the hammer dropped on us. It's only two minutes, but it's memorable. I'll give you a little warning ahead of time. Uh, post the link, Jim. Uh, you just need to search the, the terms Justin listed. Amazing Atheist, Shocking CNN Interview. <clears throat> it was uploaded August 4th, 2018. Has 123 views. Uh, two, uh, two thumbs up, two thumbs down. Two minutes, 16 seconds. And it's uh, community guidelines. So if you have like an, a, uh, maybe you have it so you can't see something that's age restricted. Uh-oh. Mr. Dozeman. I have to, I have to, I should have stated this in the beginning. Uh, this is not a, dear COPA FTC regulators, this is not a stream for children. <laughs> I'm assuming Mr. Dozeman is actually a Mr. Dozeman and uh, is well over the age of 18. So I'm not going to get in any trouble for directing them to the amazing atheist, shocking CNN interview video that I'll be showing at the end of the stream, hopefully. Uh, Jim, have you seen Patty Mayo? He's a bounty hunter, and he deals with tons of hilarious crazy. Uh, no, I haven't seen him. I, I have not seen that particular person. Relax, I'm 26. Fantastic. Fantastic. We're all good here, then, I think. <laughs> oh. Uh, let's see. Well, we could watch a few other things here. I wasn't really sure. We're taking that. Oh, move that for a second. I wasn't exactly sure what to do for this first stream. I was going to just mostly do an interaction, a Q&A thing. I got, but I've never done a members-only stream. So I thought you'd enjoy the Secure Team 10 shit. And then we could uh, take a little journey through things. When I did the last stream, the Lonely Fucks Christmas special, I showed a video where it was a... And if you didn't stick around to the end, you probably missed it. Uh, so there's this guy from back in the day called Nintendo's Advocate. Now, Nintendo's Advocate was a weird dude. Um, he was like a 
not even a neat. He was like a hikamori. He wouldn't leave his room. Um, he was like in his 30s, wouldn't leave his room, didn't work, um, used anxiety as a way of getting neat bucks, and all he did was collect video games. And he ran a YouTube channel from like 2006 to 2010. And um, he would put up really weird videos. But he claimed he had a girlfriend. And one of the videos he put up was I Am Real, where it basically is him using a voice disguiser saying that he is his own girlfriend and that people need to stop making fun. And he, he used to do videos, he wouldn't show his face, so what he'd do is he'd put a ski mask on and look like a, he looked like a burglar about to break into your house. Now, eventually, uh, the amount of fucking around that he dealt with got to the point where he just, he, he quit. He, he left the internet. Somebody archived some of those videos. I, we could watch a few. If you're interested in knowing what Nintendo Advocate Mr. Jason Mason was like, uh, we could take a look at that. Because it's, it's like inside the mind of just one of the most autistic people you could meet. Like, he used to do videos talking about things he hated. Like, he didn't want to grow up. He, he did a whole, a whole video talking about how unfair life was because he wanted to remain 10 years old forever. Because it was just the neatest thing ever. He was also the one that, and this is what made me interested in him. He talked about how his parents, uh, their house was going to be foreclosed on. And his dad was working two jobs and his mom was working. And they had no money at all. And his, he actually had the balls to complain and say, and all we could eat for Christmas was beans. So his parents are desperately trying to keep them from being homeless. And this Hikamori neat who won't leave his basement other than to buy video games at fucking GameStop is yelling about his parents not buying them enough in Nintendo games. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I ranted a little there. Jade belongs in the cage all day, every day. Uh, let's see, Fury Road, I'll take a look at that later on. Bring Jade on? Oh, no. <laughs> That'll get me banned quick, too. Uh, okay, okay, let's see here. Okay, I found the archive channel. Fantastic. Oh, oh, chat, uh, let me get, you want some deep lore on this? I think you'll find this funny. This is so bad. Oh, this is so fucking bad. Okay. Um, let's see. Where do I start with this? All right. So Jason uh, was really fat for a while, right? And his solution, his solution to not being super fat was to take a fuck ton of weight loss pills. Like way, way, way more than the safe recommended dose of weight loss pills. Uh, and it was, it was some... I think it was Xantrax was the name of it, Xantax 3, and a bunch of other stuff. The only problem is he ended up getting the side effect of making him go completely bald for a while. <laughs> so he took all these weight loss pills to improve his self-image, and then he lost all his hair because he took all the weight loss pills. And then he started taking a fuck ton of Rogaine, <laughs> and that caused him other medical issues. So it's like every time he tried to fix something with a pill, it just got worse. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I know the uh, the live chat, top chat thing is uh, definitely uh, a pain in the ass. Okay, so anyway, giving you that backstory, it's it's up to you, chat. If you'd like to look at a little, a little Nintendo advocate history, uh, just give me a yes or no. And we can watch it or not. I mean, even the archive channel, these videos are all a decade old. Oh, yeah, this guy was, he was real charming. <laughs> hated, hated minorities, would always do videos. Uh, he didn't want to appear racist, but he would always do videos bitching about minorities playing loud Mexican music. <laughs> I don't know, the guy, this fucking guy. Okay, okay. Let me pull up the channel. I, again, this is an archive channel of his videos. The only stuff that they could save. Uh, this was a big series he did. There, there were thousands of videos. This is what people could save. Uh, entitled, Things That Piss Me Off. Uh, but he also was quite musical. Now, I don't know 
uh, if you're interested in this Casanova and his singing voice. But maybe you'd like to hear Mario Golf the song. Uh, he used this to woo the women. Or Mario Party Ali Oop the song. I don't. You tell me, which song would you like? Mario Golf or Mario Party Ali Oop? Now, if there are any ladies in the audience, you might want to uh, get yourself a towel. You might get a little wet here once you hear his serenading abilities. It's just It's a fair warning to all of you out there <laughs> on what you want. Oh, I've got to give Chad a second to catch up. Nick Bate vibes? No, he wasn't. He wasn't Nick Bates, but he was definitely. He was definitely something. He was something, all right. All right, Justin. Since you answered first, we're going to go with Mario Party Aliop. Welcome to the autism. Well, I'm singing this song just so I can sing. Yeah. I was wondering if you would like to come and play. Yeah. I've got this cool game you've just got to see. <laughs> this cool game is called Mario Party. The object of this game isn't very hard. <laughs> All you have to do is collect stars. I, I'd like to remind you, he's 30 years old at the time. If you don't buy no stars, you will surely lose. Oh, no! Select one of six characters to use. Select from Mario or Luigi Or the friendly dinosaur Yoshi You're gonna play this game endlessly Mario Party You can cause your opponents a whole bunch of pain If you do your very best in every mini game Just don't get overconfident and jump for joy I, I, I think you get the the gist of his amazing ability to serenade a woman. I, I think you, you I think you have an idea of what our boy. Do you want to hear his Xantrax diet story where he complains about all his hair falling out and his dick not working? <laughs> hey guys, I was just wondering. Oh, uh, is it? Do you, should you go completely bald and your penis stops working when you when you lose all the weight? Uh. <laughs> You want a face cam? Well, okay. I'm gonna pull out. I'm gonna pull out something extra ancient. Now you have to understand. A lot of this has been purged, but there are some some sources that do exist. I can show you what. <laughs> I can show you kind of what he looked like. Oh, how am I gonna find this? Okay, hold on. Once one second here. Okay, uh, this is a really, uh, I'm not even going to explain why this was done like this. Let's just say it was an old inside joke, but. Because he's watching you. Uh, here you go. You want to know what Jason Mason looked like? I told you, he always wore a mask. So this is, here you go. Uh, it should, is it up on screen? No, it's not up on screen. Okay. Somebody edited this together. Jason Mason, Nintendo advocate, exposed in chimney intruder. Yeah, he's watching. There you go. That's uh that is what Jason <laughs> that is what Jason looked like. Nintendo advocate when he would appear on stream would always wear a ski mask. He would never let you see what his face looked like. He refused. He refused to go on and let you see what his face looked like. So if you wanted to know this is how he appeared, not creepy at all. The guy that would do the songs about um Mario Party and Mario Golf would show up and Full attire with a fucking ski mask on. Letting everybody see. Letting all the ladies get real wet. <laughs> you, you just... <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I wish there were so many videos. There were other videos. Oh, God, I wish we had archived them. They're all gone. They're lost to the ages. But that should give you somewhat of an idea <laughs> what this dude was like. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, there you go. Um, anyway, anyway, sorry, I'm losing track here. I'm going down memory lane a little bit. Uh, here's the Xantrax 3 diet pill story. Maybe it's, well, well I find this more entertaining because I remember the history of it. Maybe it's not as entertaining as I think it is, but uh, we'll listen to a few of them. Oh, can you tell the age of this, by the way? The 4x3 Windows Movie Maker fucking shitty font makes my editing ability look good. Okay, Tuesday, December 2nd, 2008, and this this isn't one of my exciting videos. It's actually a boring one. This is about um, Xantrex 3 diet pills. Now, I'm just wondering if anybody else out there that has taken this for like over a year time period, if any of you have experienced side effects like possible... um bad dandruff in the scalp or anything like that because yeah I was taking this these diet pills for um off and on a little for over a year and for a, a long time they gave me like super high energy and I felt really hyper like I was on a high he was basically getting doped up on diet pills like you know getting real fucked up getting that nice energy <laughs> get that real nice energy going. Um, the side to this, the side information to this, and I could probably still track it down if I really, really tried. Um, there are like Xantrax forums, and there are web forums talking about diet pills. And I found his accounts on those. And believe me, when he starts talking about dandruff and hair loss, like it's it's severe. So the amount of these, because all the responses he got from the diet pill people... We're like, dude, you have to be taking an obsessive amount of these pills for the side effects that you were describing. And in the course of that year of taking this off and on, I lost about 130 pounds, which was completely amazing. But after a while, these start, they started to not like have no effect on me. It was like I wasn't even taking anything anymore. And my appetite started coming back. They didn't seem to give me much energy anymore or anything. It's like my body became immune to them. So then I stopped taking them. For It's been about a month now since I took any of these. A month or longer. But the thing I want to know is, for all of the people out there that's taken these for a long time, like a year's time, and then stopped like I did, did, did it cause any side effects to anybody out there? Like dandruff really bad? Or did it cause your hair to become brittle and rip out really easy when you brush it and wash it? Uh, I'm just wondering. Uh, I took these pills and got real goofed up on them for a whole fucking year. Uh, high as a kite, really. I was just methed out of my fucking head for a whole year straight. Lost 130 fucking pounds, over 10 pounds a month. Uh, but now all my hair's fallen out and my dick doesn't work. And I'm just wondering, is that normal? Is that normal on the Xantrax? I, w I want to know these things. If it caused that for anybody out there. I don't know if that's like a, um, a withdrawal effect from suddenly stopping these after so long. Or what, but I, I didn't read anything on the internet about side effects like that. So that's why I want to know if I'm the only one that that's happened to and if these really caused that or not. Let me know, people, because it's really important to me. And also, uh, something else very strange about these is that, I mean, in the entire year or whatever that I was taking these, all they ever did was give me extreme hyperness made me feel really good for a while like I was on a super high like I said just made me feel like I was on top of the world 
And that's really the only side effect that it had, other than my stomach sometimes felt a little bit weird. But, after the entire year or whatever I was taking these, suddenly one night when I was eating my dinner, I suddenly started feeling really hot. And I couldn't figure out why. I, I started feeling like I had a sunburn all of a sudden. And I started... Uh, yeah, 540% or 6 weight loss. Yes, uh, Base Alien and Mr. Dozeman, you were correct. Uh, the dirty secret people don't talk about is that the majority of weight loss pills are called housewife meth. Uh, it, it's not... It, that's just... A, the effects on your metabolism and the, the, the effects on just a couple of other things, you, you get high. You, he built, what he's explaining here is why it stopped working after a year, is he took so many of these pills to get doped up that he literally built up a tolerance and he can't get high off them anymore. And you saw what it said. He's taking extra strength, Xantrax 3, multiple times a day for a fucking ye a year, lost 130 pounds. <laughs> lost his hair and then uh, wait, I'll see if I can find the Rogaine video once he starts taking that uh, then his dick stops working and it's just one comedy after another itching and tingling all over I went into the bathroom to look in the mirror and I couldn't believe it my face was all flushed and red I just that was the first time that ever happened in that whole year of taking these now, why was it all of a sudden different? Did they suddenly start changing the potency of these? Did they start putting more niacin than usual? Because I know that the, the niacin in these is what causes that flushing. See right there? Niacin. 30 milligrams. Yeah, he probably should have paid attention to the serving size two capsules. <laughs> I, mean, I have a feeling this dude saw servings per container 42 and thought that meant oh i need to take 42 of them i just wanted to, i'm glad i remembered that because that's another thing i wanted to mention for maximum weight weight loss take two capsules with a large glass of water 15 minutes before main meals now people most of the time i only took one dose of these each day just two pills one dose i took when I got up in the morning, I did not take these with food, hardly ever. I got up, took these, and just went about my day, and I only ate dinner. I didn't take, no, three doses a day. Man, I would have been dead if I took... So, in instead of eating with a meal, he's just, it's just raw. Just his diet every day consisted of Xantrax three, and he's wondering <laughs> why he's losing his hair, and it's going brittle. Probably because all the essential minerals and supplements and all the shit that you need, you know, all the stuff that your body needs to grow hair, or hair in a healthy manner, was literally ripped out of you and your empty stomach by nonstop use and abuse of Xantrax. Oh, and you're right. He is lying, Sean Turner. He said most of the time. I only took two most of the time. I guarantee this this drug addict probably got, you know, he started on two, felt really fucked up and good, probably lasted a couple months, oh, this is the greatest shit ever. And then that high started to go away. So he moved up to three and then four and then five and then six. And then once he hit six, it became so expensive, he was like, I got to stop. And then he's left bald and getting fat again. Oh, is the Rogaine one on here? Oh, God, they didn't save the Rogaine one. I'm sorry, chat. The Rogaine one was a good one, too. <laughs> oh, it's like memory lane. Looking at Mr. Mason and his ski mask, talking about things that piss him the fuck off. Just the most mundane shit to make videos on about being upset about. Oh, here we go. Here, this video, I think, preceded the Xantrax one. Uh, things that piss me off, gaining weight. Uh, warning, everybody, you might get real hungry. I think that's what he weighed, so that should give you an idea. 
280 was the weight before the Xantrax. He he lost 130 pounds. So he went from 280 pounds to 150 pounds in a year. Oh, what I'd give for a nice delicious pizza right now. Or some country-style pork steaks. Mmm. Or some fried chicken. Oh, gosh, man. You just can't go wrong with chicken. Eating is one of life's greatest pleasures. And I've never known of anybody that doesn't like to eat. But why, oh God, why does eating have to bring consequences? Like, I don't know, maybe that's him with the mask off. I, I, we never, you know, I could never confirm it. That might be him. <laughs> Can we watch the video where he hates Mexicans? Sure, sure, we'll watch that one. Uh, I think it's a loud neighbor one. Let me see if I can find it. Loud noisy people is his, is his euphemism for Mexicans. I had to think really hard to come up with another thing that pissed me off, but I did. And this time it's about loud people. Gosh, I really hate people that are loud. And I'm going to start off by talking about music. I just hate it when people's driving around in their cars, and they're blaring some kind of crap loud music that nobody else cares about, and they think that the whole world does. Now, I know from personal experience that the only reason that people does this is that they do think that they're cool and they're trying to get people's attention because they're driving around in their own mind they're a movie star they're the epitome of cool and they're anything but all they are is loud obnoxious and irritating to everybody around them and nobody thinks that they're cool in the least bit and I can't remember a single time where I've ever heard anybody playing their music really loud out of a car that was any kind of good music it's always just some kind of either heavy metal crap or Spanish crap. See, he, he segues into the Mexicans. He really hates the fucking Mexicans. It starts off, yes, with the Meximobile. And then now we've got dudes in sombreros. And then he'll start talking about his fucking Mexican neighbors. Or some kind of rap or hip-hop crap. Oh my gosh, man. Three types of music that I hate more than any of them. And try not to be offended if you like any of that type of music. I'm just stating what I myself hate, my own personal pet peeves. There was a time in the past, before my car broke down and left me stranded, that I used to drive around, well actually long before my car broke down, I used to drive around playing rap. Well, remember, yeah, Big Woke, he had to take Xantrax 3 for a year straight to drop 130 pounds. So it's it's very possible that he's got a bit of a fat tongue at this point. I think this video was before the Xantrax. Wrestling music, full blast, with all my windows rolled down. And I used to think that I was cool. I used to think that people would think I was cool if they heard it. Once in a while, I got a couple nods like people liked it and stuff. But all it was was stupid. It was distracting. I know from personal experience how it completely impairs your driving when you're playing with loud music. I had a hard time paying t attention to what was happening on the road because I was so busy trying to make an ass of myself, trying to be cool. That's how I know that people that plays loud music is an ass. Off the subject of playing music really loud in a car, I'm going to go to playing music really loud at your own house. Back in California, before my family and I moved. Okay, chat, what do you think, who do you think his neighbors were when he lived in California before, <laughs> before him and his family moved? What, what, what neighbors would drive this man to the point of making a video talking about loud, obnoxious music? Hmm, let's, <laughs> let's think. Oh, I wonder. Oh, we're all asses. Yeah, we like our loud music. Just trying to look cool. Like LL Cool J driving down the road, listening to that music. We had these neighbors that lived across the street. They were Mexicans. All of our neighbors there were Mexicans. We were surrounded. <laughs> we were fucking surrounded by them. Everywhere you looked were burritos. By them. 
It's like they all just came out of nowhere. But these one particular neighbors across the street had the worst habit of playing their Spanish music full blast. I mean, we were just constantly irritated. Everybody in my household just started hating those neighbors because they were so dang noisy, playing music full blast even early in the mornings and stuff, constantly hearing these loud thumping and stuff. And that was, and I think it really was Spanish music all the time. Although I think I already said that. Uh, I don't know. There might have been a couple of times it was other type of music. My mom even called the cops on them a few times because they were just. Mr. Jason Mason, Nintendo advocate, Xantrax 3 addict, calling ice, calling immigration on all those fucking Mexicans that are surrounding him, playing their quinceanero music. <laughs> We were surrounded. They came from nowhere. So obnoxious and loud. Eventually, they stopped, if I'm remembering correctly. So maybe the cops showing up all the time finally got through their heads. I don't know if they ever did know who called the cops on them. But man, people like that deserve to have the cops called. The neighbors directly next door to us, which were also Mexican, they had a party before. I think for a baby of theirs and they had these gigantic speakers out in the back of their patio area whatever you call it they were playing their music so freaking loud that our windows were vibrating in our house clear up until past midnight or later what complete jackass weirdos Anybody that plays music that loud and for that many hours, I don't care if they're having a party for the president. They're totally retarded. And to top it off, Spanish crap again. We all just wanted to rip our hair out. We practically had ourselves... If, if only he knew <laughs> that just a few, a few months later, he wouldn't have to worry about ripping his hair out because these anthrax would take care of it. ...committed because they drove us so crazy. They needed to be committed. Ooh, I wish I could have climbed up on top of the roof and shot the speakers from a distance or something and blew them out. Do you understand the depth of hatred he has for Mexicans and Mexican musics? He's talking about roof sniping his Mexican neighbors. Because <laughs> they're playing Spanish music. He's surrounded. He's surrounded on all sides by Mexicans who have placed their speakers facing directly at him just to fuck with him. They probably saw this gangly, fat, not gangly, this fat white dude in a ski mask. <laughs> they, they were like, we need to ward him off. So let's, uh, let's, let's line our speakers up around him in a, a, in a circle and try to entrap him. Leading him to have to, in a xantrax fueled rage, climb up onto his roof with a high caliber rifle. That's what they deserved. And finally, to top off this amusingly complaining video um, sometimes my complaints makes me laugh when I watch the videos uh, I'm going from cars to houses to just people in general I always got so irritated by people that were noisy and didn't act like they knew how to do anything quietly just simple little things that irritate to me like for example uh, only because it's the only thing I could think of you know how those, like, bathroom knobs have, like, a push-button lock? At least some of them does. Well, I hate it when people uses a bathroom, clicks the lock really loud. No, first of all, slams the door really loud when they go into the bathroom. Clicks the button really stinking loud to lock it. And then when they come out, they turn the knob as loud as they can, making the button unclick really loud. Uh, and again, just... just... For reference, uh, this 30-year-old man lives, his only roommates are his mother and father. So what he's complaining about is his dad takes his shits too loudly. His dad shits so loudly that he had to include it in a video, ranked number three after the Mexicans he wanted to roof snipe. 
It's like they want the whole world to know. Look at me. I'm coming out of the bathroom. Woohoo! Do not go in there. Everybody in my family except for me and one of my brothers, he and I were kind of the same in a lot of ways. We kind of lived like ninjas. We tried to do everything quietly. We just had a habit of sneaking around, you know. Anything... Uh, chat, anybody in chat take a ninja shit? Do you practice, <laughs> do you practice the ancient uh, ninjutsu uh, pooping method? Do you Naruto run to the toilet so nobody can hear you? you use winjutsu style so it's a silent flush? Anything that a person does super loud when there's no excuse for it irritates me. My last complaint on this subject is obnoxious loud people out in public areas. I hate it when people make a public spectacle of themselves and acts like they don't care who is watching them, who can hear them and see them. What kind of people are these? I'll tell you what kind of people. They're the attention hungry people. Just like those people that's driving their cars with loud music. These people are just hoping that people looks at them. I was in the mall the other day in EB Games. I mean, well, it's GameStop now. I think they changed their name. Some guy was just walking around going, hoo, 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 or just something like that really loud. <laughs> I wonder if people at the local game store know who he was and know that any noise sets him off. It's like his fucking autism trigger. Like, oh, hey, the Hikamori came out. And just, they'll just walk around him in circle. Could you imagine that? Some fat dude in a ski mask sweating nervously. And random people circling him going, huh, 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 and nobody knows what the fuck is going on? God, I wish I could have watched that. Barking like a dog or something, making everybody turn their heads and look. <laughs> they fucking bark at him! <laughs> He's looking at DS games, and people in GameStop take the time to bark at him. What a complete retard. I, I'll never understand why people does that, because I always kept such a low profile, and I was always such a quiet person. Why can't everybody be like me? Even when I was a teenager, I wasn't a loud, obnoxious weirdo. I was always a good kid, and back in my school days, I acted so much more mature than all the other kids. When, ironically, my personal life was very immature. You know, staying a kid forever, not wanting to grow up. But I had a way of being able to hide it from the public, you know? I mean, it's not like I was going around singing, I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. Or even people that just laugh really loud, not even caring if anybody around them is looking or hearing them. Man, keep your emotions to yourself. And I also hate it when people are talking on cell phones in public and acting like, they don't He's, this is, uh, honest to God, chat, this is the definition of a misanthrope. This man hates people. Like, I know, I'm, you know like you think I'm maybe joking with the Hikamori thing. He hates leaving his house because everything other people do make him go insane. Turning doorknobs, taking poops, listening to music, driving your car, walking around the mall, barking at him at GameStop, talking on your phone. It's all just too much. It's too much to cope with. I don't even care about any if anybody around them hears what they're saying. They just go on and on about their private lives. Gosh, I am so much more of a private person than all the people that does that. And why do I still see everybody talking on cell phones in their car, even after the law was passed to make it illegal nationwide, as far as I know? Makes no sense. Sometimes I'll call my mom from the store when I'm shopping for my groceries. And if anybody's standing right next to me, I'll sometimes whisper to my mom practically on the phone because I don't want... Mom, are you there? Mother, can you hear me? I'm in the store right now, but I don't want anybody to hear me because I don't, I don't like loud people. Is, is Dad taking a poop right now? I heard a click. Tell Dad to be quiet. It's making... They're barking at me, Mom. I want the people around me to hear what I'm saying. Doesn't matter what I'm saying, I'm just a private person. One of the ways that you could tell that I'm a private person is just by not showing my face on these videos. I like to keep my privacy. I don't want the whole world knowing what I look like. It's bad enough they all hear my voice. But I hope you all enjoyed this latest rant, rant, and I hope I didn't offend any of you out there because I really don't want to make enemies here on YouTube. 
I try my best to be good and nice to everybody. Although some people on YouTube that I've met, well, it's impossible to be nice. You basically just have to cuss them out because that's the only way they understand. Thank you all for watching it. And I hope you all, well, rate my video, subscribe, send those friend invites if you're not already a subscriber or a friend. Well, there you go. Just, just remember to send him those friend invites. That's what he's looking for. <laughs> oh, God, it was a treasure trove. Some of the stuff that's lost to the ages is really upsetting. The Beans for Christmas stuff, uh, his game collection videos, which were uh, pretty remarkable. It's just an empty room with games boxed up, lined up all the way to the ceiling, all along every wall. And he doesn't play any of them. Like in one of his videos, he talks about how he just collects them with his welfare money, uh, but he doesn't play any video game he buys. <laughs> it's this guy was just on another level. The one about wanting to be a kid forever, talking about how unfair it is, how he loved the playground and Ninja Turtles, and how he hates being old. And uh, it, it's just I, I I guarantee you he's still living in his parents' basement. I guarantee it. There's no way he's ever going to go outside and be normally well-adjusted. I'm sure he probably stopped faking the girlfriend, but aside from that, I don't know what the fuck he's been up to. Uh, Jim, look up Stepbrother in 2019. Funny shit. Uh, yeah, uh, Love Invader, I hate people. Be my friend. Yeah, that was his, that was his key message. Um... <laughs> you guys want to see something else related to this? Why not? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, hold on one sec. Might take a minute. <laughs> Please, still, this has to exist still. Uh, maybe it's okay. Okay, hold on. Maybe it's this. Uh, it'll, it'll take me a second, chat. I know I'm terrible. Just terrible. Oh. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. Get Medicare off the internet. Medicare got Nintendo's Advocate and Miss Nintendo's Advocate off of YouTube. And I want Medicare to die. Sing this petition if you want Medicare. Films for the Fustelarians and DJ MTP off the internet. Sponsored by Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim 55. By the way, 307. 307 out of 500 signatures. Almost got it. He almost he got very close. He got very close to getting his I petition signed. Uh, but it died. It died on the vine. <laughs> It <laughs> died on the vine. <sighs> Max B, Godspeed. Sing this petition. Sing it immediately. These people need to be... They need to be taken off the internet. <laughs> they need to die. Oh. Oh, were they mad. Oh. <sighs> Would you gladly sing that petition? Uh, they were so close. They were only 283 signatures away from glory. 283 signatures away from just making it happen. Medicare, how could you make fun of this man? You need to die. <laughs> That's, yeah. By internet law, if they'd hit 500, that would have been the end of it. That's, that's when everything gets turned off. And they're like, nah, nah, we're, we're done here. We're done here. All right. Well, we've been going for two hours. How about we do uh, 15 minutes? I'll, I'll do a QA, and a I guess. I don't know how to run one of these things. And then we'll finish off with the uh, Amazing Atheist shocking CNN interview. So, Chad, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I, I, can, there's no, I don't really have any more information about Mr. Mason, so I can't give you anything on that. Uh, but, but if it's something I can answer, I'll try to. Uh, Keegan the Great, I'd sing the fuck out of that petition. I think we'd all sing the fuck out of that petition. I think, I think that's what we're going for.
Just sing your fucking heart out. I don't know if it's a delay if none of you want to ask anything. If that's the case, we can just ju jump into the Amazing Atheist. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, tits or ass? Tits, obviously. I'm a tits man, the orange cow. Uh, Kick in the grade. Why is your pee-pee hard? I would have no idea. Maybe it's Jason Mason's amazing sexy voice. Have you played the new Fire Emblem? What are your thoughts? I have not had a chance to play it yet, but I do have it. I'm, I'm waiting to get into it. Favorite game of 2019? You know, I, the one I keep going back to to play over and over again is Noida. I don't know why it is. It's not even that great of a game, but it's fucking addictive. I can't stop playing Noida for some reason. I, am I saying that right? N-O-I-T-A? It's that roguelike uh, wand magician going through a cave system shit. I've just I've been playing the fuck out of that. Uh, of all the Bing Bing Wahoo games, which Bing Bing or which Bing's your Wahoo the most? Which one do I like the most? I I don't know. Um, I did enjoy Super Mario Odyssey. I think more than Legend of Zelda. I guess. Um, I Kirby was shit. Yoshi's Woolly World was eh. Uh, I think Fire Emblem will be great. Uh, let's see. I haven't had a chance to get into Damon X Machina yet. I haven't had a chance to get into Fire Emblem really yet. And I haven't had a chance to get into Astral Chain yet. Uh, which are the three that I'm kind of really looking forward to. I just like that they put stuff like Dice uh, Disgaea on there. Uh, what was that Labyrinth game by Nice as well is on there? It's It's pretty good. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, Luigi's Mansion 3 I enjoyed a lot. So, maybe that one? Uh, New Year's plans? Uh, hanging out with friends. Uh, can you give us a white pill? I want some positivity. I'll give you a white pill. Even in Virginia, where the House and the Senate... or Well, uh, House and Senate... Even in Virginia, where the government and the governor are both blue now, and they're pushing forward on all these gun reform laws, and they're pushing forward on all these other laws saying that they have the will of the people to enforce uh, these different edicts to take away Second Amendment rights. Uh, people aren't putting up with it. Sheriff's departments aren't putting up with it. Citizens aren't putting up with it. Even the National Guard is breaking ranks and saying that they won't do what the governor wants them to do. So if you want a white pill, even in a state that's turning blue, even in a state where the government is completely dedicated towards doing something like that, the law enforcement and uh, National Guard and citizens won't go along with it. Uh, so there's your uh, there's your white pill. <clears throat> uh, who's a weirdo from Medicare Forum days that you'd still love to cover? I, I don't. At this point, I can't remember half of them. Uh, that all got purged. Taberman purged Medicare off the internet. So I couldn't even tell you, you know, the threads on the people that we had. Uh, new Fire Emblem is good, but censored broke my fucking heart. Uh, well, I'll have to I'll have to be ready for some heartbreak. When's the alien stream with David State? Whenever I can set it up. I mean, things have been busy uh, just with the holidays and putting out videos and doing streams, but hopefully soon. Also, Control is a really good SCP game. I like Control. I played it. People said, oh, shit. I actually enjoyed it. I think it's got flaws. I think there are issues with some of the mechanics and the way they implement powers. You know, I've always been one of those people, if you're going to make a game where you give somebody access to cool telekinetic abilities and weird superpowers, you should do it in a way that gives them time to use it outside and inside of combat. <clears throat> Don't give somebody a cool move, and then they have nowhere to use it. And one of the problems with control, I felt, was you'd get abilities, but then there wasn't really any time to use them. You know, you'd have one or cool or one or two really cool, you know, firefights, and then that was kind of it. I, I wanted to, I want more PSYOPs. You know, that PS2 game where you could just brutally fuck with people for no reason? That's what I was looking for. Hopefully if they do a sequel to Control, they'll do that. Uh, Edeltards, get out, okay. Uh, I'm all about Petra now. Uh, Brigade Pride Worldwide, I can respect that, Jim. Why don't you drink cheap whiskey like a real man? I, I'm just not a fan of the taste. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. Vodka is just, it has a taste that I appreciate. Who doesn't like paint thinner? 
Uh, had a chance to play the Dragon Ball game I sent you, Jimbo? No, I have not had a chance yet. Astro Chain is good. Well, it's good to know. Uh, what will the 2010s be remembered for? Uh, 2010s will be remembered for the rise of mobile. I, I think that's pretty much what it's going to be remembered for. The rise of mobile and uh, the beginning of the censorship or sanitization of the internet. Those two will be the big the big things, at least in my mind. Real question this time. Uh, did you play the Shenmue series? They finally came out with a number three after almost two decades. Um, I did play Shenmue 1. Never got a chance to play the second one. I know it came out on Xbox, but I never got it. And I have no interest in number three. It looked boring as fuck. What happened... Or, Whatever happened to 8chan thought it was coming back. Uh, my understanding is 8chan tried to come back. Uh, the previous owner, Hot Wheels, prevented them from finding a host or DDoS protector. They changed their name to 8coon. Uh, Code Monkey implemented something, what is it, uh, like Project Odin, where you're going to host an instance yourself and it was going to be peer to peer. Um, I think right now it exists somewhat as 8coon, and I think it is mostly Q related. That, that's my understanding. Uh, will you ever review your own old videos? Probably not. Uh, what video are you working on right now? Um, I'm actually working on a manga video uh, for the YouTube channel. Uh, why is Star Wars shit? The first trilogy was fine. You know, it was new, it was unique, practical effects were good. Uh, but then Lucas got into this habit of wanting to put CG in to fix everything, and he started fucking with that. And then the sequels came out, and the whole plot of the sequels don't make any fucking sense. Yes, the Emperor is evil. Yes, he's trying to take over the Senate, make it, or the Republican, make it a, um, an empire. But why were the Jedi involved with using slaves? Like, you can't take a morally good position as a Jedi and then use a slave army of people that are disposable humans. That's a plot hole, an inconsistency that makes no sense. And from what I understand, the supplementary material says that the person that started the fucking cloning program was a Jedi. So the good guys want to use slaves that are disposable to fight their own fucking battles. I thought the Sith were the bad guys. And it was, it was so much government talk and politics talk and boring bullshit about trade embargoes and overly complicated, convoluted plots with terrible acting and a shitty love story. And they ruined what could have been good. And the newer ones, it feels like it's just a... <clears throat> it's an attempt to insert a Mary Sue that had a chance to be a good... Ray could have been a good character, but... I, I don't know. To make her a good character, it felt like they had to shit on and kill off everyone else. And I didn't like that. And, you know, I know what the twist is at the end of the new movie. And they could have made it so much better. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's just a lot of wasted potential. It's a lot of... it's an There's an expanded universe that exists within Star Wars that you could have picked and chosen from. You could have picked... Isn't there some future story arc in some of the books talking about uh, outer galactic or outer universal threat that comes in some weird kind of alien that uses technology and biology in a way they can't cope with and threatens to wipe out fucking everything and then it's like the Jedi and the Sith and the Mandalorians are trying to fight it I, I think I'm thinking of the right thing but maybe I'm off anyway it, it just to me it feels like wasted potential uh, real men drink Mike's hard lemonade maybe uh, what do you think about the 2020s what do I think they'll be like I think you'll see the rise of uh, some alternative uh, platforms. I don't know how effective they'll be, but, you know, they'll come about. I think VR will progress. I think AR will probably become a bigger thing and probably overtake VR if they're smart because uh, the money-making potential of uh, augmented reality is way bigger uh, than VR. I mean, I can think of a practical use for it right away. I mean, you talk about the medium of physical advertisements with billboards. If you're running a company and competing against somebody, and they've got fucking billboards all over the place. Are you going to pay a thousand bucks to put up your own billboard? Or would you rather have anybody that's wearing a pair of augmented reality glasses suddenly have your ad overlaid on top of their ad, effectively stealing their billboard space but not breaking the law? So, I mean, there are a lot of really interesting marketing and advertisement techniques that make me think that once commercial businesses understand that, 
they would push harder for AR than they would VR. Not to mention gaming and all the other cool shit you could do with it. Who knows? But I think we'll see some cool tech. Uh, give us your favorite uh, Dojin tag, Jim. I don't know about that. Uh, as far as manga, I've been reading a lot of... And I always... I butcher the names. But mostly I've been sticking into uh, Aseki uh, Fantasy and Adventure. If you're a big fan of the 80s wrestling, I recommend NWA Power on YouTube. Not about wrestling, but the characters and stories. I actually watch... Uh, oh, fuck, I... Uh, is it OSW? Or, yeah, it's OSW. It's like the the Brits. They're like British or, or Irish or Scottish. I don't know what they are. Uh, but I, I watch their stuff when it comes to old wrestling. I think they put together a good show, a good podcast, video, whatever you want to call it. Uh, how long till uh, Kuk K. jung -un launches the nukes at us? Probably pretty soon. When's the second Tranny's video coming out? Uh, I am working on it. I don't know, have a definitive date. I've just been doing videos that I'm enjoying. So next up is the manga one, but I will get the tranny stuff and the furry stuff up eventually here. Who's going to pay for my therapy from the Transtastic video? And when do I get to suffer through another one? Uh, like I said, it should be coming. Uh, will we strike everyone and everything down with our laser swords? Can we kill this guy and make our life so much easier? No, killing that particular guy is against the Jedi way. Now let's massacre tons of people, but not that guy. Not, I like his. I like the gumption he's got. He's got a little bit of moxie in him. I gotta let him live. Yeah, per Kathleen Kennedy, none of the books are canon now. Brilliant way to fucking screw up the extended universe. Uh, AR will put. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. AR will put make the world weird. Suddenly, people walking around as furries and Shinji. Uh, you know what, Matthew uh, Harder, you just came up with a brilliant business idea. I, I'll tell you why. If people implement AR, apps are going to be a thing on AR. And aside from that billboard advertising thing, I guarantee you somebody's going to come up with the idea of overlaying avatars on top of actual people. Probably wireless transmission of data. You run into me on the street, it downloads my avatar to over, you know, overlay on me. And now everybody's walking around as a fucking furry or they've got horns on their head or they're a cartoon character. They're Hatsune Miku! and you get to charge them every time they use your fucking app. You should go develop that. You'll be a millionaire in 10 years. Uh, Hannah Smith, teachers are leaving en masse and being replaced with immigrants. Thoughts? Uh, what? The teaching is uh, just an untenable profession at this point. Uh, districts and states have taken away so much power from the classroom that teachers can't come up with lesson plans that make sense, can't pick material that they think will be effective, can't do after-school stuff that would be effective. Uh, can't discipline students in any way whatsoever. Uh, students are aware of this and abuse it. I know you're sick of the topic, but what do you think of Sargoy wanted you to lead GG so badly? I was in Gamergate for three months uh, when it started. And when it was mostly a fucking 4chan thing. And, you know, Reddit popped on and Funny Junk popped on and a few others. Uh, and it was entertaining for a while, and then I bailed. It, you know, Gamergate was five years ago. It's at this. It's it's getting real cringy talking about it at this point. I mean, this is like it'd be like if we had a conversation. Be like if you said you should lead chinology. Like it's time to let it go. <laughs> it's time to let it go and let it die. Uh, overlaying Instagram filters, makeup industry crashes. Sean Turner, there you go. See, Matthew, Sean, you guys. Be the first to develop that app, and you will make millions of dollars. Be ahead of the curve. It sounds dumb as fuck, but you will make a ton of money doing it. And I'm sure it's probably really not that difficult. It's just a 2D overlay that's, you know, curved a little bit, so it makes it look 3D. So there you go. I look forward. When you two become millionaires, remember to come buy a hat. <laughs> I want some hat money out of that. And your future rich lives. Okay. Uh, we're going to close up the stream. I will play it out with the Amazing Atheist's shocking CNN interview, which is a video still on YouTube. And it's community rated. So it means YouTube said it's fine. Uh, but the stream that I'm hosting right now will immediately come down after this. So if you're archiving it, you can probably cut it right now. Uh, other than that, hopefully you enjoyed the members-only stream. 
it'd be a little more organized going forward, but I kind of wanted to feel out how to do these for the first one. I'll hold a poll uh, for next month to see what day and what time works better for everybody. Because uh, it's about half of the people here. So I, I want more people, you know, where this is a perk that they can actually access it. Um, I think people will archive this if they don't or their issues with the archives. I'll start archiving it myself and putting it up on a secondary channel. Uh, so if you miss a live broadcast, it just gets put up. Yes, you need to buy my fucking hats. Okay, without further ado, chat. It's the moment you've been waiting for. Let me make sure I am ready to delete this motherfucker immediately. All right. Here we go. This is The Amazing Atheist. Shocking. CNN interview. Presented in all its glory. Uh, have a good... Oh, what? <laughs> Before we go, have a good weekend, chat. Um, and enjoy. So the talk back question today, at least the first one, why is atheism on the rise in America? Joining me now to discuss this are William Lane Craig, the founder of reasonablefaith.org, Reverend Markel Hutchins, a civil and human rights activist, and T.J. Kirk, who calls himself the amazing atheist. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to address the first question to you, Will, because the Pope is resigning at the end of the month, and, and you say that um, he faces tremendous challenges to Christianity from both the left and the right. TJ, are you with me? to say they're any one religion. Well, I think that, that he's right. TJ's right. And it causes people who may not be faith-oriented anyway to question the existence of this God that we talk about and we preach about in Christian pulpits across the country. So you're the theologian, Bill. So, you know, yes, people I, do wonder why I, God I, allows these things yes, to Yes, and I appreciate TJ's honesty in saying that we shouldn't equate non-religious with atheism. In fact, atheism is not on the rise in this country. It's around 2 to 3 percent <laughs> of the population. And the reason people identify often is not... It's 5 percent. I think it's 2 to 3 from my, the studies I've seen. I, I'd well, like I mean, TJ the, to the, get the, in the here. Thing that I still have some oil left. I'm going to stick my balls in it. <sighs> <sighs> Okay, sadly, we're going to have to wrap this up, but it was fascinating. We have to move on to the other. Question number two this morning. Uh... <laughs> this, is, this is so good. Oh, oh, fuck. You know, the original was unedited. There wasn't a little TJ face over it. Oh. <laughs> he deep fried them. Oh, chat. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 chat. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll end the stream there. Uh, thank you all for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope it's a memory. I hope it's a memory you all enjoy. It's a memory you all enjoy. All right. Uh, have a good weekend, and I will speak to you all.